Welcome back to Base Bible. Today we're going to do something a little bit different than what we normally do. As you know, here at Base Bible, week after week, we provide fun scholarly commentary on the Revised Common Lectionary. But today we're going to do something just a little bit different than that. We're going to do our first book review on this title, Preaching the Word with John Chrysostom by Gerald L. Bray. Now, as you know, here at Base Bible, we love quoting the Church Fathers. Partly because old things are sometimes really cool and make you look sophisticated to quote them, but also to acknowledge a very important truth. That when we read the Bible, we are reading a book that has been read over the millennia by our various ancestors and forebears that have much wisdom to give us. It is fitting then that our first book review is going to be on this little book by John, uh, about John Chrysostom. As you know, St. John Chrysostom was a very, very famous 4th century preacher who we've already quoted a couple of times here at Base Bible to help us guide our reading of the scriptures. And St. John Chrysostom was very famous for always pointing people to read the scriptures for themselves. In one of his homilies, he very famously exhorted his congregation in this way. This also I am ever urging and shall not cease to urge, that you give attention, not only to the words spoken, but that also when at home in your house, you exercise yourselves constantly in reading the divine scriptures. Let not anyone say to me that these exhortations are vain and irrelevant. I am discharging public duties. I am engaged in some art or handiwork. I have a wife. I'm bringing up my children. I have to manage a household. I am full of worldly business. It is not for me to read the scriptures, but for those who have bid adieu to the world, for those who dwell on the summit of the hills, those who constantly lead a secluded life. What dost thou say, O man? It is thy duty even more than theirs, for they do not so much need the aid to be derived from the Holy Scriptures as they do who are engaged in much business. We who, as it were, are tossed in the midst of the sea, cannot avoid many failings. We ever stand in need of the immediate and constant comfort of the Scriptures. For Chrysostom, then, it was regular people that needed the Bible most, not the super-religious. And he encouraged people to read the scriptures both before and after church, possibly while also watching their favorite YouTube show, Base Bible. So with that now, let's begin our review of Preaching the Word with John Chrysostom. Gerald L. Bray is an Anglican theologian and historian that currently teaches at Beeson Divinity School, and he also eerily looks like what I will probably look like in 40 years. So, why did Bray decide to write this book on St. John Chrysostom? Well, Chrysostom is actually a nickname, because Chrysostom means golden mouth. No, not quite like that. Yeah, a little bit more like that. And he was called Golden Mouth because he was very famous for his preaching. And his preaching was famous for two reasons. One, Chrysostom preached in an expository manner, which means that he would systematically go through a portion of the Bible verse by verse in a series of sermons. Secondly, Chrysostom was also a man of the people. As Bray notes, it did not matter to John if a few highly educated snobs look down on divine revelation as uncouth and simplistic. What he cared about was that it should be intelligible to all because it was intended for all. What Bray does in this short introduction to St. John Chrysostom is give us a brief biography of who Chrysostom was, as well as a few chapters that summarize and gather for us a lot of the main points of Chrysostom's preaching from uh, his series on the book of Genesis, on the Gospels of Matthew and John, as well as on uh, St. Paul's letter to the Romans. For Bray, Chrysostom is a Bible preacher that was very pastorally attentive to his congregation, accommodating himself to them, showing the love of Christ in his easy to follow and uh, pastorally applicable style of expository preaching. And this book, coming under, under 120 pages, is a very good and reasonably 
easy to read uh, introduction to Chrysostomum for those that are unfamiliar with it. Now we're going to do something called the sandwiching technique. It's in which you give, you know, one slice of bread of praise, then you have some criticism in the middle like PB and J, and then you have another slice of bread of praise on top just so that the whole thing is digestible. So let's begin. Bray is a crystal clear writer. He avoids academic jargon and he makes him very, very easy to read and follow. And the portions that Bray chooses to excerpt for us from Chrysostom's preaching are very wisely chosen. He made a very good choice of selection in terms of what areas of Chrysostom's uh, mass 600 sermons we would actually read. Lastly, Bray also does a really good job of giving Chrysostom a fair shake, giving him a charitable portrait. Even in those areas where Chrysostom's ancient sensibilities might rub up against our more modern ones, like his view on uh, Judaism or his views on women. But now let's get into the middle. Let's get into the little PB and J here of the book. Bray chooses to formulate Chrysostom's importance and to frame it within uh, the 16th century Protestant Reformation which is kind of like trying to assess the history of Chinese cuisine within uh, North America's commercialization of Chinese cuisine. You would miss so much of what Chinese cuisine was really about if you only framed it within the North American context of its commercialization. Well, so too here with Chrysostom, we need a much wider framework than his importance within the 16th century Protestant Reformation. Because St. John Chrysostom was a patriarch of Constantinople. He was a monk at one point in his life. He preached the importance of fasting. He believed in iconography. He believed in Christ's real presence in the Eucharist. The Eastern Orthodox Church has an entire liturgy named after Chrysostom. So despite Chrysostom's fame for being an expository biblical preacher, we shouldn't imagine that he was a nascent Protestant. Chrysostom was an ancient Orthodox Christian. And this is really important because when Bray frames Chrysostom within the context of the 16th century Protestant Reformation, Bray makes a number of uh, anachronistic observations. That's taking something from one time and projecting it back into the past in a way that the past would never have recognized. So, you know, for instance, uh, Bray actually says at one point in this book that we shouldn't evaluate Chrysostom within the 16th century Protestant Reformation, which is really great. But then Bray can't help himself and does so in asking a couple pages later what Chrysostom would have thought about the debate about imputation versus infusion of God's grace in the Christian. Which is kind of like asking what Shakespeare would have thought about the debate between lyricists and mumble rappers. It just would not have made any sense to Shakespeare. Lastly, one citation that Bray makes of Chrysostom's preaching is highly misleading, and I had to point it out. Bray suggests that Chrysostom saw no difference between John the Baptist's baptism and Christ's baptism. And then Bray quotes a passage from uh, Chrysostom's 29th homily on the Gospel of John, in which Chrysostom writes that both alike were without the Spirit. But the problem is that when you read the homily in its context, it's very clear that Chrysostom is not saying what Bray suggests that Chrysostom is saying. If you look at the context of the homily, it's clear that Chrysostom is comparing John the Baptist's uh, baptism with Christ's disciples' baptism at that particular moment in the Gospel of John. And this is important because, as Bray says elsewhere in the book, Chrysostom, like almost all the church fathers, believed that the Holy Spirit was given in Christian baptism. So, despite how Bray tries to quote this passage from the Gospel, from uh, Chrysostom's preaching on the Gospel of John later in this book, 
Chrysostom does believe that there is a huge difference between John the Baptist baptisms and Christ. In Christ's baptism, we are given the, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now to end with a second slice of bread of praise. Bray does, at various points in this book, do, does a very good job of framing Chrysostom within the context of his contemporary church fathers like St. Augustine of Hippo or St. Basil of Caesarea. And while Chrysostom more frequently employs a literal exegesis, Bray does stress that Chrysostom, like almost all the church fathers, believed in the importance of both literal interpretation of the scriptures as well as allegorical or secondary uh, meanings of the scripture, that Chrysostom, Chrysostom held both of these in view, although he may have used the literal exegesis a fair bit more in his preaching. So what is most praiseworthy about uh, Bray's take on Chrysostom is that Bray shows how someone that is honored within the Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholic communions, like St. John Chrysostom is, is also someone that uh, who biblically minded sola scriptura Protestant folks can also appreciate. So this kind of take on Chrysostom does a really good job of breaking down the binary between traditionalists and uh, Bible folk. It does a really good job of kind of breaking that down to show, no, actually, here, here's a figure, Chrysostom, that, that kind of both these big sides of Christianity can honor and enjoy. And Bray does a really good job of doing that. That is all for us here at Base Bible Today. Thank you for coming to watch here, especially that this is our first book review. Uh, thanks very much to Lexham Press. That's Lexham Press that published this book. They sent me a complimentary copy for a review. Uh, they did not require that I do a positive review. They wanted an unbiased review, so that's what they got. And I'm very, very grateful to have had the opportunity. Please feel free to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, to follow, to subscribe here to the page, to become a Patreon subscriber, especially if you would like to, to commission me to do a book review. You can do so by becoming a fifth tier subscriber to Patreon. Thanks again, and we'll see you here again soon for another uh, book review or another episode of our commentary. Blessings to you.